this once a year, so I'm going to call the annual reorganizational meeting of the White River Unified District Board of Directors to order at 6.32 p.m. Are there any adjustments to the agenda? Hearing none, the first order of business before I hand this off is to elect a chairperson. Do I have nominations for chair? I would like to nominate Andrew Jones to be our chairperson. Do I have a second for that? Second. <clears throat> Do we have any other nominations? Hearing none, all those in favor? Signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? I think I got all the ayes. Thank you. All right, Andrew, it's all yours. Okay. And we'll move on to electing a vice chairperson. Any nominations for a vice chair? I would like to nominate Chris Jarvis to be vice chair. Or co is it vice chair or co chair? Vice, vice chair. Do we have a second? I'll second. I'll second. Okay. All in favor? Or are there any other nominations? Hearing none. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. So that's Chris for vice chair. Now electing a clerk. Um, is there anybody who would like to nominate a clerk? Well, before we do this, does anybody like to volunteer to be a clerk? <laughs> Uh, the clerk approves the minutes. Yes. And anything else? No. It ensures that the agendas are getting posted. I'll do it. I'll volunteer. Okay. If nobody wants to nominate. Okay. So okay. Do I'll nominate uh, Ed as uh, Sullivan as clerk. <coughs> okay. Are there any other nominations? Okay. Uh, do we have a second for? Anybody want a second, Ed, for clerk? I'll second it. Okay. Okay, all in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. That's set. Um, so we need three members for the WRBSU full board. Um, what we've typically done is done three members to the full board and then done three alternates, not just one. For three, five, we have it listed as the point one alternate, but generally we have just a point whoever is not a member to be an alternate. And the members try and make it any time that they can, but if not, then we have somebody else fill in for them. Um, so uh, who would like to represent us on the full board? Are these are still Tuesdays? Okay. Yes. Yep. Yeah, I'd like to be on the full board. Fourth, fourth Tuesday. Fourth Tuesday. Six. Okay. Yep. Hey, Rodney, I'll be one of them. I'd like to. I'd like to as well. Okay. Um, so we have one. We have four people interested. Um, do we? Would you be okay being an alternate? Just. As uh, well, as I was board. looking it over, what I was thinking is that if um, we've got too many people as the initials, the, the primaries, uh -huh. that are from one town, uh, you as the chair are more uh, neutral in being on it, like the chair is expected to be on it. So I was figuring the other two slots, uh, I, would, I would see if uh, Chris or Rodney wants to go in or Nancy, and then I would volunteer if nobody wanted Royalton for the other slot, or so maybe me or Peggy could be the other one for the, the primaries, be the chair and, and one from each town. <coughs> I figured that was the, for the, you know. Um, yeah, we haven't done it that way in the past, just because the chair is on the executive board, so they're kind of, like, so that the full board meets every other month, and the executive board, board meets every other month. 
Um, well, we really haven't been doing it that way anymore. Oh, right. We haven't been, been doing that. Just, do we yeah. even do the executive now, order I mean, anymore? Yeah, this came up in share. It is part of your bylaws, so that's why we still do it. I certainly have tried. I think it is better for the organization to have full board meetings yeah, every month for possible. momentum and as much as possible to keep folks informed and just felt like it, it's even a, a different level of transparency to me in a way, mm -hmm. um, having the full board every month. So we really have not used the executive board in over a year, but it is part of the bylaws. And part of why we we this has worked is we do hybrids. Yeah. When we were doing meetings, just in person, yeah. it was really challenging to get full board quorums as it moved throughout the SU. Um, what do you guys think? I mean, I don't, I mean, I, I don't, I mean, I think one thing, you know, I was going to kind of bring it up with some of the articles of agreement this evening is, you know, we have to start looking at ourselves as one unified district and not Royalton or Bethel or, you know, because we often do that, even though, you know, we're, we're one, one happy family and it shouldn't matter, you know, what side of the street you're from, because we should all have the same interests in mind. So I, I don't feel that it matters in what town who's who's representing us, as long as they're representing the board as a whole. Um, I mean, if you go by the members that we have, you know, Rabney and myself would be, you know, not that we have a lot of a lot of experience, but the most experience other than Peggy. Um, so, if, you know, I'd be more than willing to bow out for Peggy because she's got more experience, but I would just say, you know, more experience and to date. But. Uh -huh. It doesn't change my desire to, to participate at that level. So can't learn it if I can't. And, and just so you know, too, you can go. You don't have to be a voter. Like a lot of times somebody doesn't show up. So you can still go to the full board as an alternate and basically you can still participate. And you might not, if there's three other people there, then somebody doesn't vote. If it's four of us, say four of us show up to a full board meeting. Well, three of them can vote, and we decide. But um, <clears throat> I mean, don't if if somebody's not on the, just don't feel that you don't have to. You can't go if you're not a mm. um, vote well, no, member. I would go anyway, but I'm probably going to go to every one of them. So and uh, and people, you know, you still get to be involved in the discussion and whatnot. It's just mm -hmm. and very seldom does it come down to like one vote uh, when they do vote on something. So. Uh, But anyways, I mean, I'll, okay. I'm not, you know, so I, just makes your sense. But uh, it's, I, it's great if all of us go to every meeting, every full meeting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, well, we still do have <laughs> four people for three spots. Um, is there? Any thoughts on how to resolve? Or should we just... Uh, we have a quorum. Could we vote? Yeah, we can we Yeah, can we can just call, call a question for each person. Um, well, then I'd entertain a motion to vote on something. Well, I mean, to, the simple motion would be you as the chair. Well, I think... Right? That's one, and then we... Or am I incorrect? I mean, or is that assumed? We, we can we can make motions to appoint each in member individually, or do them as a block of three. Let's do three at a time. So, whatever somebody would like to make a motion for. Well, do we, do we have to nominate each member separately? Is what you're saying? He's saying we could do either. We could do a, a three-person block, or we could go one at a time. correct well, I mean if it's one at a time I'll, I will nominate Andrew for the the full board okay do we have a second second all right all in favor say aye aye aye, aye. okay uh, Nancy were you and I there okay she's never lost her audio yeah <laughs> Um, I forgot to turn the audio off because there's a lot of background noise here. Sure. 
I mean, I would make a motion that to nominate myself and, and Rodney for the remaining two board seats. Okay. Is there a second? I would second that. Okay. All in favor, say aye. 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 Uh, any opposed? One. Nancy, are you an I or a nay? I said I. Okay. Yeah, I couldn't hear it. Okay. Okay, so I think that makes the three members me, Chris, and Rodney. Well, you should definitely come to the meetings. Appreciate your interest. Um, is everybody okay being appointed alternates? Mm hmm. Okay. I would nominate, I do need to nominate Ed and Nancy and Peggy as alternate mm -hmm. sure. for board members. I, I nominate it. Seconded. Okay. <clears throat> All in favor say aye. 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 Okay, appoint one member to the executive board. Uh, my understanding was that is always, well not always, but pretty much always the chair. So. But, I, but it's not. It's not. An automatic. It's not an automatic. I, I nominate Andrew. I'll, I'll second that. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 And I nominate okay. Chris, the co chair, to be uh, the alternate. A second. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Um, pointing a recording secretary. Tammy, are you still willing to be recording She's secretary? Ready. Oh, there you go. Just throw your voice. <laughs> Great. Permanent. Permanent. Okay. Affirmative. Oh, I thought she said permanent. <laughs> I did too. <laughs> no, so, uh, we'll appoint. It's <laughs> not going to be forever. It's a long time, Tammy. <clears throat> we'll appoint Tammy as the recording secretary. Um, we need to appoint a member for signing AP and payroll. Uh, Rodney's <clears throat> been doing that. You willing to continue? Yeah, I can still do it. Okay. Oh. I'll Do you want to be yep. a second I'll, for I'll, yep. alternate? All right, so we'll have Rodney for signing AP and payroll and um, Ed as the alternate. So moved. Okay. We do that electronically. I think there can't be a lot, lot to it, so you can show me whatever. Well, <clears throat> yeah, it's, they email it to us. They email the whole payroll whatever to the whole board. Mm -hmm. I usually give it like a day for it so everybody so gets okay. a chance to look at it and then I sign it like okay. the next day and return it to them. Okay. <clears throat> so that would be a case of like if Rodney's on vacation or okay. Right. Yeah. And I would have let you know if I'm out of town. Right. Okay. Okay. Um so we, that way we moved it but does right. it okay. Yeah. Did we have a second? I'll second it. Okay. All in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. Uh, aye. Negotiation council. Um, is there somebody who, this has been, had been Shannon, so um, we need somebody to uh, be on that. Um, is somebody interested in being on the negotiation council? They we're currently um, in the thick of support staff negotiations. I would estimate we'll be meeting weekly until we're able to come to a resolution. So we meet on Thursdays at 5.30 to about 6.30 every other week. And then on the other Thursday, it's from 5.30 until about 8. So that's, a, that's the time commitment right now. We're in the thick of it. I can't do it because it'll mm -hmm. be a conflict of interest. Okay. My wife's a teacher. I have a conflict of interest because my daughter is in the support staff. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think Peggy can do those times. Um, I am coaching most Thursdays. Um, yes. Saving Thursday from what? I guess the best way to think about it is, th so we meet every two weeks on Thursdays, and they go. We start 
the committee meets to get prepped from 5.30 to 6, and then we negotiate from 6 to 8. Um, and then on the off Thursday, we meet again as a planning session from f usually about 5.30 to 6.30. So you can plan on a weekly meeting. And that would be at least, well, to be determined. But we're in the thick of it right now. <laughs> Do you have any ability to do it? No. I mean, I talked to Jamie about it, or inquired about it. I'd like to, but I just don't know if I can put the time towards it with the town functions I have as well. Right. It's nobody. Um, I don't want to make a commitment that I can't every week on Thursday. Um, Would there be some way of kind of having rotating members from our district no the committee would be i would i no because the way negotiations work is you build momentum right. and it's really challenging um if the membership of that committee is rotating mm -hmm. uh, it, it i would say it would put it the di the board at a disadvantage right um can we table that one for now? Mm -hmm. Come back to it? Because, um, yeah, I don't, I mean, it, I'm not sure we're going to be able to have anybody since we've got multiple conflicts of interest and conflicts with time, I think. Our, you know, and, and so the board knows you, just like you've seen the other ones, there's certainly um, every board has to approve right. the agreement. So, just like policy. So, and um, as we get further along in negotiations, that committee we, will continue to give updates at the full board level, level in executive session when we get to some places where right. there's information at that level to discuss. Is, um, are these, these aren't virtual meetings, right? They're, no, they are. are they're, they're hybrid. Okay. Yep. Right. Well, why don't we table that for now? Um, appointing a member for the policy committee. Rodney's been doing that in the past. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm fine with continuing that. Okay. Uh, I entertain a motion to appoint Rodney onto the policy committee. So moved. A second. Second. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Aye. Um, appointing a truant officer. This has been um, Loretta, uh, Loretta um, Stolnik. So. Yeah, it, so we've used Loretta, and then I would say you should appoint the Bethel Constable as well. And the principal. Yeah. Okay. So we had a like the Royalton Police Chief, <coughs> Constable, and Principals. This is an old thing in statute when we there was truancy officers, so we have to appoint. But every um, district attorney's office now has protocol that schools have to, to abide by in regards to truancy. Um, and so we follow the Windsor County here in this district um, truancy protocols, um, which is a it's a collaborative approach to dealing with um, chronic absenteeism. Okay. Move to appoint the police chief in Royalton and the Bethel constable and the principals as a truant officer. <coughs> so in Bethel we have two constables, so. First and second, or? Well, they, yeah, and they, they, they split just duty, so. Split duty? So I guess they would both be. Both of them. Yeah. Is there any harm in I mean, the principals them? actually do it anyways, really, for the most yeah. part. Yeah. I think it's fine. Yeah. Right. I haven't it's seen good. that used in a long time. <laughs> yeah, you could just say we're in constables. Yeah. Yeah. They were used. Yeah. So, so yeah, a couple constables. So moved. Whoever's on duty. <laughs> so those words were the Royalton Police, police Chief. Chief. The constables, Bethel, 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 Bethel constables, constables plural. and the principals fall into their how as backups or they oh, write the letters. Okay, great. Sometimes go to the house. Just wanted to make sure that it was kind of an equal. Okay. Yeah. 
So being that um, Burlton also has a constable, would that be a person to point to that? or? No, I was just saying, wouldn't it be the whole police department instead of just the road? Because Oscar is actually the constable for Bethel, and he's a police officer in Royalton. Well, I think we would follow chain of command, and that doesn't mean that the chief couldn't designate those responsibilities. But I think we should uh, should appoint the chief. Okay. So we do it like at the sheriff's office. We appoint the sheriffs, or we could do the royal police department. Yeah. Let's just do the chief. I think that's fine. Okay. So for the record, the royal police <coughs> chief, that's Bethel constables and principals. Thank you. We have a motion, right? Yep, I don't think it's a second. second. Okay, there we go. All in favor, say aye. 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 Um, the newspaper is designated newspaper for official notices was the Randolph Herald. Um, do we have the Valley News in there too? And the Valley News. Um, and the radio station. Great Eastern. Great Eastern. Okay, that's the conglomeration that does multiple stations. Is it the Great Eastern or the Great Ver Greater Vermont Broadcasters? We've been doing Great Eastern. Great, thank you. <clears throat> Is there no longer a RTCC representative? Uh, that's a good question. I apologize for interrupting. No, I may have missed that one. So we'll we can add that at the end. Okay. Under 3.18. Yep. Good catch. So I'll, des um, I'll move the designation of the newspaper and radio stations. Okay. Seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Setting the date, time, and location of regular school board meetings. Um, we have been doing 6.30. Uh, third Tuesday of the month, alternating between the Bethel and Royalty campuses. Um, Peggy did ask if it was possible to change it to start at 7. Um, I don't know if we want to hold off on doing this until she's able to join the meeting, or do people have any... Yeah, why don't, why don't we hold off on doing this until Peggy's able to join? Um, and we'll return to 3.15 later, if everybody's okay with that. And I like the 7 o'clock meetings. It's a, I know they're tougher, because if it's a longer agenda, you're here later, but I seem to think that we, I think we had more participation early. You know, we weren't waiting for as many members to come on and things like that. But. Right. Yeah, no, I, I can see some advantages. I think it might be tough on the staff um, you know, administration to have the days go that late. Um, but we can we can certainly discuss it once she's able to join us. Yeah, one one angle around that is we could dismiss certain administrators. Like if there's not discussion that's going to need principal input, we could dismiss them. Right. Um, the plus I would speak for in, in regards to for me is that it would allow me some additional time at Sharon. Right. So if you said to me. I would rather be later and out one last night a week than be out two nights. Um, but it, if it could give me an, an hour and a half with the Sharon board before joining, actually, I think it could serve us, serve me well anyways. So know that in, in regards to me, if, if there's things where the principals aren't needed for the agenda, we could let them loose. I'm fine staying later. Okay. Does that sound okay to you guys, principals? Um, I mean, our meetings don't go as late as they used to, anyways. Yeah. Because we're doing such a great job. <laughs> <laughs> of course. But but it would. I, I'm fine with it in the sense okay. of it. Yeah. Because okay. in general, the earlier board tends to get short time. Sh they get short in my right. time. You, so you stay at our board as long as. Uh, yeah. Go right. On. So it, actually, that would be a, a gain, and some of them it's worked out just fine having it this way. But for Sharon and you guys, actually, if you went later, I think it would be better. Okay. Well, is that we okay? Need a motion on that? Yeah. So I'd make a motion that we set a time of 7 p.m. the third Tuesday of each month. We we'll alternate locations between Bethel Campus and Royalton Campus. Okay. 
Seconded. All right, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, that is set. Um, designating posting places. Um, do you have the list of what we did last um, year? Do, do you want to rec or do you want the recommendation to be post offices, town offices, and school entrances and White River Valley website as designated posting places? That sounds. That's what we did last year. Yeah, I think it's generally what we did. Unless anybody has any other thoughts. Okay. That's pretty standard. Yeah. I'll move that those locations you just read. <clears throat> are the designated posting places. Okay. We have a second? Second it. All right. All in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. Um, the 317, the task force appointments. Um, we currently... I went on at the last, the last meeting. So what... So we've got facilities. Right, facilities. We've, we've got, got the recruitment. Is it recruitment or communication? It was both. Yeah, it okay. was like recruitment and communications. You've got finance. And then there's been a task force at the red level for um, the child care. One. Oh, right, it was the child care specifically. Yeah. Separate pre K one and then a child care one. Is the child care one ongoing? I'd be interested in the recruitment. In the recruitment one? Okay. Um, all right, so I don't think we need a motion for this. I think we can just. That's just committees, right? Yeah. So, Nancy, do the recruitment communication one. Okay, add facilities. Um, did you want to continue on the facilities as yeah, well? Yeah, I just okay. started it. Okay. I'll be on um, finance. Uh, Peggy was on finance too, and I assume she'd want to stay. Um, and so the uh, child care task force, is that still going on, Andrea? I don't think so because we made it through your recommendation. I mean, I think what we talked about was we could come back together as needed. Okay. But um, same thing with the preschool task force. I think they just kind of made a recommendation, and if you, if they really you know, cease to exist at that point. Yeah. Right. Okay. If, All right. Um, <clears throat> did you want to be on any of the task force, Rodney, or the just uh, not task force? Well, yeah, I was on the recruitment task force. Um, Okay, so you and Nancy for recruitment or communications? Uh, shoots on communications. That, that's the same, same, same thing. We did the oh, same, it is yeah. the same one. Okay. Yeah, we can put both be on it, I guess. And yep. That that's good because then there's two of us on each one. So. Yeah. Oh, that, that's what I was missing. Peggy's on finance with you. Yep. But. Um, okay. So. Historically, there was a policy committee, but I'm not certain that there is a need for that one. That's at the. Um, sort of okay, great. I needed that confirmation. Thank you. Okay. So RTCC? Yep. RTCC representative. Um, so this was once a month. Um, and They're almost like once a quarter right now. Yeah, well. I went to one meeting. You've been at Rob. Yes, I have. Yeah. I went, they don't have meetings very often. They don't meet often is what I have. It's more like once a year. Are you willing to do it again? <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing next year. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Rodney, uh, we'll appoint Rodney as our RTCC representative. Yeah. I think we need to make a motion for that one. Unless anybody else wants to do it. Okay, we're through the reorg. That's good, because you're on their list. So yeah, they'll just keep sending me the email next year. All right. They have the last, years, last two years. Moving on to our consent agenda to approve the minutes of Wednesday, March 1st, uh, regular, and the minutes of March 1st special. Um, I'd entertain a motion to approve the minutes. Motion to approve both. 
regular and special? Do you have a second? Yeah, I'll second that. Is there any, um, any discussion? Okay. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, the minutes are approved. Uh, do we have any public comment at this time, either in person or online? Question on the busing. Can we change bus companies? Um, Is that, that further into your agenda and I should just reply? No, uh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, so we did a request for proposals for uh, bus companies and we re only received one. The board rejected that proposal. We've put it back up to bid, um, and we've received a bid that the full board will take up um, at their meeting next week. Um, in addition, the board charged me to price out um, leasing options in the event that we decided to, if the board wanted to run our own. So we will have a budget for that as well, and the board will hopefully be able to make a decision next Tuesday. I know there were concerns about busing. There's definitely will be busing in place, and we won't miss any beat, even starting July 1. Okay. So, so basically we're exploring our options right now. Yeah. And that's yeah, done at the supervisory. I answered the email for the drivers for coaching. And I went to Bill Bailu, and he basically was like, I'm not talking about talking to Mr. Charlie. So <laughs> um, I saw it like from the next. Oh, great. So, we should talk. Awesome. Okay, any other public comment? Okay, do we have any board comment? Yeah, I was going to say something. Uh, I don't know how many of you have gotten this book, but uh, I got this a while back, and I started going through it, through it, but I don't know if that's something that you can get sent to us, but... Uh, Everyone gets one. Right. Yeah, so anyways, it, it's, it's a lot of good information on their own procedure and whatnot. And, um, I just wanted to mention it, so I don't know if everybody's getting that, but it's like, I didn't, uh, I think I got this one last year, but... So anyways, oh, if you don't get one, ask, ask for one. Yeah, and if you're not getting it, let me know, but everyone should get it. I don't, they just mail them to you directly, so... Yeah, okay. actual name, <laughs> Have you guys received um, one of those? Yeah. I got my hands on an old copy. I haven't gotten the new one. Yeah, yeah. they're a little slow in the uptake. Yeah, I don't think it's yeah. updated on any, but uh, <coughs> anyway, there is. There's good. You know, just make sure you get one. Okay. Was the um, the VPA doing their board orientation? I, I went through one there. And VSBA? Yeah. Yep, I just sent it out to Nancy, actually, and Ed, for okay. new board members. Um, that training earlier today. Yep. And asked folks to register. So, yes. I yes, know it's, it's pretty everything. helpful. Especially if you haven't been on a board before. It really gives you a lot of insight, uh, as well as on the school level of it. Okay. Any other board comment? Move to the celebration of learning. We have a celebration of learning for this month. Yep. This is a video. Is there any setup? Ah. I'm not aware. No, I think the video is speak to it. Going to speak to it. Good evening. This is Pam Arnold, interim principal, over here at the middle school in Bethel. I'm sorry, I'm not there in person tonight. I'm going to share a little message for the celebration of learning for this month. Tell someone you are sorry. If you need help, ask for it. You are loved beyond belief. Be an upstander, not a bystander. You can still turn an ink blot into a butterfly. The middle school community was so grateful to have Mr. John Halligan as a guest last week to share Ryan's story. Through powerful video and pictures of Ryan's young life, Mr. Halligan shared so much of what he learned following Ryan's tragic suicide at the age of 13. The Halligan family learned that Ryan had been a victim of cyberbullying and bullying during his middle school years. Following the tragedy, and as a result, 
of all that Mr. Halligan and his family learned afterwards, he felt compelled to protect other children and families from similar harm. In 2004, he spearheaded here in Vermont the passing of the bullying prevention law, and in 2006, he established a law that requires education concerning suicide prevention in schools. This presentation supported our focused efforts in the middle school to provide continuing education around bullying and cyberbullying, a continuation that has included facts, language, examples, and with this presentation, a personal situation. There was so much power in this story because it was real. It happened, and our students felt that personal connection to Mr. Halligan and the impact that it had on his family. The respect and engagement for not only a guest to our school, but the heartfelt caring, compassion, and empathy demonstrated by our students to Mr. Halligan certainly made us proud. Our incredible staff through pod advisory engaged in discussion with students in the days leading up to the present presentation and then immediately after everyone returned to their pod advisory for an opportunity to have a discussion and to debrief their experience. There were many takeaways that students shared. Some specific ones that they um, articulated to me were the only way we can actually change is if we choose to and they shared how important it is to be nice to people. People sometimes have depression and that is okay because there are people who can help you. I learned about how to recognize fake friends. And another one, there's something that I wanna share with my mother and I'm gonna do that tonight because it's really important that she knows. <laughs> Mr. Halligan highlighted the need to take their friend's actions seriously, to encourage a friend to get help to talk to an adult they trust, to not be afraid and don't be alone in helping a, a friend. Tell someone, tell anyone. Don't ever believe that you don't matter and that no matter what, no one would miss you because that is absolutely not true. He shared multiple times that you are loved beyond belief. And never be ashamed, ashamed to ask for help. His final message to the students was to make a difference in your school, to apologize to others if you need to, to recognize people who are not really friends, and to be an upstander and not a bystander. And finally, something he shared took time for him himself to realize, and that was that there's always a message and a hope for forgiveness. Mr. Halligan also presented to adults that evening and even with the small turn in, turnout, he provided so much information and suggestions around technology, safety, and suicide prevention. He graciously gave each adult who attended the presentation a copy of his two books, one for kids and one for parents. He also provided our school with a copy of each, and we will have them in our library. Again, we were so grateful for this opportunity, and I believe that Mr. Halligan's message will resonate with our students forever and that their individual takeaways will support how they interact and support each other. So yes, this is a celebration of learning, maybe not in a way that you typically have a report. However, in this case, we are celebrating how important it is to take care of each other, to find kindness, to have forgiveness, to apologize if we need to apologize, but more than that, to be proactive, positive members of our school community and to help each other and not bring each other down. So again, I thank you for allowing me to share this message. I'm sorry that I'm not there in person, and I hope that you um, will take a message away from this as we have taken as well. Thank you. All right. That's great. Okay, then we'll move on to uh, Superintendent report. Um, so you, you have my report in hand, um, and I want to, I did send out a memo today around three particular legislative bills, but it was late in the day by the time I got them out to you. So I'll orally just go over each one of those as well. Um, but what I wanted to point out in my report is that, and I had also even this out to the full board, that Secretary French has stepped down. Um, and we'll be leaving the Department of Ed at the end of the month. 
And that aligns to in my report under the work around um, our new state standardized testing um, that I wanted to talk to you about in regards to VCAP. And so I'm mentioning that because remember back in the fall I talked to you about Actually, I actually wrote a letter to all of our families that the state was going with a new testing platform, Cognia. That's now named part of the Vermont State, uh, the Vermont Comprehensive Assessment Program. That's what VCAP stands for. And it replaced Smarter Balance Assessment Consortium. I'm just bringing it up to let you know that there, there have been challenges with the rollout of VCAP. Um, and so, and most of the challenges are just getting information in a timely manner to get our folks trained. Our teachers are being incredibly flexible um, and resilient, I think, in navigating this new standardized assessment program. At the SU level, Ray and our chief academic officer, Onda Adams, has been working diligently to make certain that we're able to have things uploaded in the system, so hopefully we don't have significant hiccups in the buildings. Um, and Onda has actually is created her own training for our staff because that hasn't been rolled out by the agency yet. Um, and so I mention all of it to say that, you know, it is baseline assessment data. I'm hopeful that we're going to be able to use it to measure our indicators and to see if we're continuing our trajectory of growth. Um, I think there's a frustration, at least in the field, in regards to um, rolling out a pretty significant new um, education quality measuring metric around VCAP because it, it is part of how the agency holds us accountable for making adequate yearly progress and um, it just seems they've lost some people in that department um, and now we've lost our secretary and so I would just say to you that we're going to work really hard to make certain that our, we're supporting folks as, as best as we possibly can to implement I'm concerned that there's going to be challenges throughout the field in it um, and I do think Dan's leaving will add to those challenges. Um, so any other questions on the report before I move to the legislative updates? I don't have anything. Uh, so I sent you um, information today, uh, and I'll start with the first one is S56. That is the pre-K, it was S56 slash H208. S56 is still alive. It may cross over from the Senate to the House. Um, S56 is essentially requesting that there's an approval of a study committee to study child care and pre-K. There is a possibility, though, that the House Ed Committee could, and this would be good for our district, could um, indicate that those school districts that are providing full-day pre-K be awarded a full 1.0 FTE average daily membership. Right now, under Act 166, all we get is a 0.46 for a pre-K student. But for us, where we provide five days a week of pre-K, it would actually allow us to count them as a whole student, 1.0. Um, I will be <coughs> trying to, I'm gonna actually ask if I can get in front of the House Ed Committee to testify on that. Um, and so I'm hopeful that I might be able to do that on our behalf of our districts. I think for our districts that are providing full day pre-K, there's clearly been articulated a shortage in pre-K, high quality pre-K, child care, and for our districts that are providing it, I believe we should be acknowledged as a 1.0 student. Um, and so I do plan to try to see if I can get in front of the house head on that because I think there's a possibility that that could happen for next year, which would benefit us. Um, so that's S56. The rest of the provisions within that bill have been taken out and just uh, committed to a study committee. So the other one is universal meals. There's a lot of movement. I believe that universal meals, it may cross over. I think there's a lot of traction to approve it. The one uh, area of concern that I'll note with universal meals is that they have not diversified a funding mechanism. I've been talking about this since last year. Um, they still have not. And when you say, well, what could there be? There could be looking at um, other taxes possibly across the state that they could have used to help pay for it. Um, and they could have looked to also split it up from the general fund and also into the 
ed fund. Right now they're just looking at it at the ed fund level. I think it's important for boards to know what that means is an automatic three cent increase on taxes moving forward. Yeah, basically they just adjust the yield. Yeah, so all they're gonna do is adjust the yield. Um, but I think we, as we get into budgeting, I'm already thinking ahead that it, that yield, we already knew the yield was not gonna be as positive next year. Um, and now we've got an added um, expense to the end fund. And so that's something for us to just be um, thinking about. I'll get her in the chair. But that is, that's the universal meal piece. And um, like I said, there seems to be tons of momentum. Um, and again, when I'm speaking to this as an educator, we all acknowledge there's a lot of positives that come from at universal meals in regards to students not feeling shame for being qualified for free and reduced lunch and getting meals that way. I think we've seen participation increase significantly. I think there's been lots of good around it. I just wish there had been more thought around how do we diversify the funding stream for it. Um, so that's, that's, that's my talk about universal meals. And then the other one is Senate Bill S66, which had to do with uh, the fallout of Carson v. Macon. Um, and it, and certainly had a lot, of, a lot of discussion at choice districts um, throughout the supervisory union state. Um, what we've got now is a House Ed bill, and it's in the email I sent you. It's two, maybe 56, I can't, don't, I don't remember, but it's in your email, um, which is a bill that increases accountability and reporting measures and assurances from independent schools. Um, it doesn't specifically address public funds going to religious schools, but it does say public funds going to any independent school will require them to provide, for example, special education to all students. Ensure that they don't charge tuition that offsets their ability to provide either scholarships or reduced tuition for folks paying choosing to, to send kids there on an independent level. Um, it requires that independent schools report student achievement data to the LEA, which right now, and, and I don't know those of you who have followed it, um, Jay Battams, who lives in RSU and is a superintendent in Hanover, he lives in Stratford, testified in front of the House Ed Committee um, about how there really are not equal playing fields around independent <laughs> schools accountability and public schools accountability. And an example would be that you cannot find any data from the agency around how students at independent schools are achieving on the statewide assessment system. They would now be required to report that out. So I think there's a lot of uh, real positive outcomes out of the, the House version right now in regards to ensuring that if a public dollar is going to fund students, that that public daughter dollar is assuring the same assurances that any student that attended a public school would be provided around equity. And so that is the current creation of that bill. It, does, it took away the cap of having to designate schools. It took away that threshold of only the traditional four independent, historically independent schools being able to be designated, but did really require uh, significant more accountability um, for independent schools. And so that's where that bill is currently at right now. On crossover. I expect more drafting around it. It seems um, the Senate Ed Committee um, has thus far had less of an appetite to want to require more accountability for independent schools. Well, and the bill out of the Senate was a lot more strict, though, as far as... It was, but like it died as soon as it got to the yeah. the Senate Ed Committee. They never even really discussed it. All right. <clears throat> okay. Um, I'm sorry if you mentioned this. Might, no, you're no, uh, right. the, the preschool one, was that for both... Or, uh, is that still only for four-year-olds, four or does it provide three-year-olds as well? My understanding is is that, and I, again, I'm basing this off of the chair of the House Ed Committee giving an update to the superintendents 
um, last week that they were going to look for it to be 1.0 FTE for four-year-olds. And nothing for three years. Well, they would still give us 0.46. Oh, okay. Now, that could, again, be redrafted, and I would say that what's it, it's about early education, and it's not any cheaper for us right. to provide programming for a three-year-old versus a four-year-old. Right, but I think, you know, what we've kind day. of done in the past was there's the half-day option and there's the full-day option, so you could, you know, say three-year-olds get the half-day option and can pay to have a full-day option. No, right, we could. Yeah. I'm just saying for those schools that are providing three-year-old, I have some districts providing full-day three-year-olds right now right. Um, without charging. And um, I think if we're providing it and we're saying that there's a shortage and there's a need, that they should count as a 1.02. Sure. So right. that, that's going to be what I try to speak to um, at the Housing Committee. Yeah. Good. Okay. Uh, great. Does anybody have any other questions for Jamie? Um, just to fill you in, we did change the meeting time to 7 o'clock going forward. Thank you. So. Now, hopefully, I will only be fashionable. <laughs> <laughs> um, and as far as committees go, uh, you're going to continue on the finance committee. Okay with that? Yeah. Um, and you're an alternate for the SU board. Okay. <laughs> Um, would you have any ability to uh, join the negotiation committee? Uh, it was 5.30 meetings, so we kind of suspect that you Yeah, no, that's not going to work. And being a former teacher myself, I might not be very good at <laughs> it. Yeah. All right. Um, well, we'll move to the principal's report now. Reports. Uh, for elementary, we highlighted our most recent community builder, uh, and that was all about <coughs> connectedness, and uh, it was kind of lovely because we were short somebody, so I get to step in and help in a very messy handprint project about creating something all together. Uh, and I would just update that we were working on our climate surveys for families, for staff, and for students, uh, so that will be gathered soon by not just elementary, but elementary, middle, and high school, so we can report on all that information. So if you've got that in your text or your email and you are a parent, I really encourage you to fill that out and reply. <laughs> um, and then in addition, uh, talked about their Friday in-service, that the elementary is getting responsive classroom training, uh, specifically on responding to misbehavior which is, has been really wonderful and well-received and create, generating good conversation. It's a nice follow-up to our last summer four-day responsive classroom training that many teachers took. Um, and also maybe a little good gateway for, gateway for teachers that didn't take it because it will be offered in our district in Chelsea and Tunbridge. And so hopefully if people didn't take it, they'll have the little taste of it so they can want to take it uh, there. Uh, and then I would say for elementary, Finally, we just did a big shout out to the PTO and Royalton who was able to help us bring in the owls and raptors. Uh, it was really nice for the Royalton campus elementary to come. To the, we went out to we went to the birds that day, but it was lovely. <laughs> All for the birds. And at the middle school, um, <clears throat> three highlights, several highlights, but three that I'll point out are that we, <clears throat> when I went out on leave, Pam. Arnold came in and reset the behavior expectations, and that's been going very well. The Mr. West is running a flexible pathways program, as you are aware, and he's had lots of visitors coming into the school. We've had EMTs and nurses, and I think we may have had a, a trooper or a um, game warden. And I sat in today with a athletic trainer, which a lot of kids have interest in that career field, and then. In the th under the third goal, we have a lot going on, as you might imagine, with the uh, the grant that's in our favor now. And Bethel University continues to thrive all March long, and we offered something in restorative practices. And actually, we're going to have students teaching math next week. So if you're interested, still not too late to sign up and learn a little math. And. Another highlight I could make is that um, 
we heard about um, John Halligan's presentation, which is lovely, but we're also sugaring outside <laughs> again this year, and Vonna Wheeler is doing that with a couple students that are very dedicated to it. Still using the, I think I have the language right, the arch. <laughs> Yes. I'm looking to a sugar maker, <laughs> and that was donated by um, Ty Kuchar's family, so it's it's serving us well. And that's uh, some updates from the middle school. Yeah, so at the high school, uh, just a few things I'd like to highlight is one is our, our Friday morning assembly is now all student run. Um, Josh White and Trinity D. Simone is taking that over and having the students run that. And I'm telling you, that is just the best thing. I just sit back and watch those kids. And uh, you know, some of those athletes that you see on the court that aren't nervous at all in front of all those fans when they're with their peers, that microphone is just shaking. <laughs> and it's just really great to see. And, and you, know, you get to see a different side of students stepping up. And uh, it's been really well received. Um, next is, and this wasn't in the report, unfortunately, because the report was due Thursday and the play was Friday and Saturday. But if anyone saw the musical, it was, it was the highlight of my year thus far. I mean, those kids were phenomenal. I've been to several Broadway shows, and this tops it. And it's like, I, I, I went home on Thursday, I told my wife, we got to go. I said, you've got to see this. It was just amazing, the singing, dancing. The... What was also very cool was one of our seniors was a co-director of the play. And so she wasn't in the play, but she was directed. We also had one of our students choreography the play. And we had Sean Smith, who has been doing lighting for years and years and years, and we'll miss him. Um, they had problems with the motherboard, I guess, you know, the language I'm not familiar with. And Sean called the company that we got it from and was like, hey, the lights aren't working. And the guy's like, well, what you'll need to do, and before he got it out, Sean was like, I've already checked, you know, he went through the whole thing. And the guy's like, do you want a job? And they offered jo <laughs> Sean a job right over the phone. So, um, but that was really amazing. So next year with the performances, we really got to do a better job of getting other schools here at our, our school to see that. Because again, once you see something like that, why wouldn't you want to come to our school? Um, and right now, there's a playwright issue where you can you have to pay for so many performances. So we're going to straighten that out for next year for sure. Cool. Questions for us? Um, when are we going to get an update on the performing arts initiative for doing all that work and the revamp and? Is that, are we going to get another update on that soon? Yeah, probably as a future agenda item we should talk about next month, okay. is my thought. There just wasn't really room on the agenda this month. Okay. But yeah. We certainly haven't lost track of it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, business manager report. Tara with us? Maybe Sharon's still rolling. If she did, I don't, I don't know what happened. Let's check my yeah. phone. <laughs> we'll just table, table it maybe. For now. Okay, uh, is there any negotiations committee update? Should yeah, uh, so we're. Uh, we're in the thick of negotiations. We're meeting every two weeks. Um, and uh, the committee is, like I said, meeting weekly. And hopefully we'll have um, some positive news to report to the board here in the next month. Okay. Tara still at Sharon. All right, uh, we'll move on to some of our discussion items. Uh, there's the BSBA Code of Ethics. Um, have, has everybody had a chance to uh, read that? I kind of skimmed it real quickly. Okay. Is everybody comfortable? Adopting it for this year. I mean, I, I mean, I think the document's well written um, with the expectations of the board member, but I, but I still have the the piece of it is what happens if a board member violates 
one of these, intentionally or unintentionally. Yeah, sure. And we talked about, you know, uh, how do we address the member's conduct in a consistent manner that's laid out in a set of rules or recommendations, I think, is, is the challenge that I have with it. That's actually in this book. Um, right, the potential or suggested. Yeah, I think I... But I guess my question is if we adopt this code of ethics that's here, which is basically what's in the book, does that come with the page that includes addressing board conduct? Yeah, I only made one copy of it. I don't know if right, well, I think... You guys want to read that. So this would be a sample yeah. um, kind of policy for... or a sample process and policy for dealing with board member conduct. Mm -hmm. um, this is. Uh, have you guys been discussing this at the public C committee? No, we haven't. We haven't met since. We haven't met since the last time we got feedback. I plan to bring right. it up. Okay. But right. So we'll probably everything that we're talking about the the, the con uh, this, uh, conduct and the uh, what do you call it the contract code of ethics code of ethics contract. Yeah. Is, we'll probably come to the next policy committee meeting, which is next Tuesday. Okay. Um, so I would, I would suggest we let that process play out until we can adopt something SU wide and align ourselves with, you know, so that Jamie doesn't have a bunch of different rules to. But I mean, it, out. is it this would be helpful? I think for Rodney and I. Is there a sentiment from this board that they would like the code of ethics to actually become the, the policy and, and then capture the other pieces of that? Like, take this and make it into actually our code of ethics policy. The, this the practice the, has been every board adopting it, so I can't see that there'd be opposition to that, right. Right. but it, with that added. Because yeah. currently, all, all, what we have in front of us, as well as the the sample pages here, they all come from the same book. Yes. So I guess if you adopted it, you would adopt it as a package. And, yeah. Uh, I mean, but I, actually turn it into SU-wide policy. Right. I mean, I didn't see anything wrong with with how it's written um, in the packet uh, through the Vermont School Board Association piece, because I think, I mean, even though the addressing the behavior, there there is some gray area there, but at least it establishes a a template to go about that if something does happen, right? Um, and I, and I think that it, the code of ethics piece of it um, is is well written and pretty much accompanies everything that that um, that we'd be looking for. Um, and I just think you've got to have got to have both, right? You got to have the what we what we expect out of you, and if something does happen, these are maybe the board's options to to explore on um, right on behavior. Yeah, no, I. I think that this all is basically, I, I think that this makes sense and, and the process makes sense. You know, I do think we need to be very clear and make sure it's, you know, crystal clear, like when in the code of ethics, you know, it's like voice opinions respectfully and treat with respect other board members, administrators, school staff, and members of the public. Is that like all the time or is that at board meetings or is that in kind of official board conduct or like, you know, when you're dealing with somebody who happens to be a constituent one-on-one -on -one and it's not necessarily a board thing, like, does this still apply? You know, I think that's where we need to make sure that it's very clear. Well, I, I think what. if you're talking to somebody about school board subjects, then you're representing the school board if you're an elected member. Yeah, I mean, I think I, I can certainly say that we should be respectful in, in that manner, but I do think it's, you know, it's not representing the school board, though, like as far as your opinion isn't the opinion of the school board. That's one of the things that this... No, everybody still has a right to their own opinion. Right, exactly. But you don't have a right to call people names or say, like, you know, I'm on a school board and you got to do yeah. this. You know, you don't have that right. right. Yeah. yeah, so all I was trying to say is like, you know, 
this I think is is pretty very good, but um, I don't know, maybe even a little more clarity on when it applies and when it doesn't. You know, well, just to. Oh well, no! I think the code of ethics is, is is always in because you you can't uh, talk about things that are in executive session. You can't. Uh, you right. know. Yeah. No. No. I know. And you. Yes. You can have your opinion, but you can't. Uh, like I said, talk, you know, there's certain things you can't talk about that are private for whatever reason. Right. No. I mean, I think uh, there's so, a lot of it that's. So I would say that the the, the, the the code of ethics <laughs> is always in effect whenever you're talking to somebody about school subjects. Okay. That's my opinion. Right. <laughs> I mean, I think it, in the document, it, it tried to do a good job of navigating through the, you know, when you have your board hat and when you don't have your board hat on. But right. it talked about negotiating or, or different different pieces um, when you may not be in a meeting. Um, but I think you're always going to have that gray area of, yeah. you know, when you, when you take a public seat, whatever that might be, you know, that you have to conduct yourself in a, a way at all times when you're in public. Right. regardless of what the subject matter might be so um. um well for tonight are we in agreement to adopt this code of ethics and sign on to that and then we can have the i mean we policy can, committee. <clears throat> excuse me we can at least we can adopt this and then adopt more correct i mean right. we can agree to it so then i move to adopt this this evening because there's nothing in what I read here there's nothing here that I find that doesn't fit what we need so and anything else would be additive there's nothing on here that I don't think we should be and then would be yeah and we all know that if the SU would do, uh, passes a yeah, oh, the, SU, SU, yeah ethics, the SU would, that that would be, override that this would but it would pretty much that be that the same be, thing that would be policy too that would be policy yeah yeah. So just to be clear, if we adopt, again, the one page is what we have in our packet. Mm -hmm. Does that also include the addressing the board members' conduct pages that are also confusing? They're also in the... Right, that, that's that page that I printed. You know, um, because essentially in the book from Vermont School Boards Association, these pages are all linked together. And what we have in front of us right. tonight. So I think so that would be this that they printed is like in the in the it's, book, right? With these, right? So with, okay. with those other ones. Yeah. So if we are adopting this, are we saying we're just adopting this, but not those sheets, or are we adopting the whole thing as a package? Because I think. Well, I think we're de uh, develop uh, the code of ethics. And I was going to say the way it's on our agenda, it says VSBA code of ethics. So if they're all together in the book, I would say that we could vote and say all together in the book. This is well, the Code of Ethics, page one, two, and three. So the and, Code and of the Ethics is separate the, from this, and that okay. this this refers to a sample Code of Ethics. Right. So basically, this is what happens if you violate the Code of Ethics. This is the Code of Ethics. So I would suggest that we adopt the Code of Ethics and kind of work through the Policy Committee to right. see what the, the, the Policy Committee will adopt the, policy, the rest, and then we'll which hopefully we can have happen in a relatively expedient fashion <laughs> though I guess it's still going to need multiple readings but I mean, that's the thing is it's like, going to be like it'll six be months June. before we see well, it. I'm right, but that's so I guess what happens is if we adopt this code of ethics tonight and we have an issue next month what do we do about it um because we have we've adopted something that we don't have any enforcement for right I mean there's nothing to say that we can't follow this anyway like I can send a letter and we can well, I'm real willing to roll the dice on that. That we're not right. going to have to punish somebody next month, right? Um, you know, before the policy committee actually. But I mean, even if the policy committee adopts, like, recommends something, it's going to need to go before the full board, and then we need to have multiple readings. But right. I think you that's one of the reasons why I don't want to adopt this now is like we haven't had any sort of reading on like policies, warnings that it's happening. So you know, I think following that process is important. Even though I agree, it's important that we get something. That actually outlines what um, what the actions to be taken are. You know, just I, I think it's important to follow the process so that the public can be involved in everything we do. 
want to. Um, so I would I would recommend that we adopt the code of ethics and I implore everybody to follow it <laughs> so that this isn't an issue. Um, make sure you read it and understand what we're we are expected to how we're expected to behave and and take it seriously. Um, I move that we adopt the BSBA code of ethics <coughs> as as it, as it is in this packet right now, for the time being. I'll second that. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Uh, any opposed? Nay. I just want to be on record that I agree with the Code of Ethics, but however, to not have the documents linked with the ability to address the member's conduct if something happens. I think we're just kind of part in front of the worst sure. deal. So I'd like to see either a full package or you know, not do it in piecemeal. But. Okay. I didn't catch all of those words. I mean, no disrespect. Oh, sorry. But I got a general concept. Um, yep. And so um, Chris agrees <clears throat> with the code of ethics, but the board does not presently have the authority to enforce. I apologize. I mean, no disrespect. Not, not authority to enforce, but a procedure for you know, violation a of yeah, a template. The template for addressing board misconduct sh should it happen. member mentor mentee program so there's the there's the new uh, the WRVSU based on our um, retreat uh, created a WRVSU mentor um, committee to develop a mentoring program for new uh, onboarding board members in addition to the work that VSBA does. And so we have a handbook, um, which I've been providing new board members. Part of the process is I also sit down and meet with new board members. Um, and I'm providing this handbook, reminding them there's a bunch of hyperlinks of good information within the handbook. Um, I onboard them in regards to making certain they get an SU email. I remind them to do old board business and work with their SU email. Um, I, this provides, you know, reminds about the superintendent board relations policy. We go over chain of command, things of that nature. But in addition to, uh, the full board has the idea of wanting to be able to assign a mentor so that new board members have someone locally that they can reach out to to have coffee and just talk about board work. Um, and so what I'm trying to do is solicit folks that are interested in serving as a mentor. One of the agenda items for the full board to take up next week is going to be how we want to assign mentors. It was really clear from the committee we didn't want board chairs serving for mentor, as a mentor to incoming board members on that district board. That, that seems like it could be a conflict of interest, um, possibly. And so what we're looking to do is possibly have, uh, example, a Sharon board member would serve as a mentor for a Rudd board member, possibly. Um, and there seemed to be a lot of traction in that idea. Have it be close in proximity, um, but allow for board members within the SU to get to know each other, but also not have it be, have it be about the role of the board and the work of the board, but not necessarily about specific topics that you might be taking up um, as board mem new board members. So that's gonna be on the agenda for next Tuesday, but what I'm interested in is trying to create a list of folks interesting to serve as mentors. So I don't know if anyone's raising their hand like right now, yes, this sounds great, I wanna serve as a mentor. You can also email me, but we do currently right now have six new board members that have joined the organization as board members at their local district boards. Um, and I expect at least one new member still to go, if not two from Rochester, Stockbridge, and um, Granville, Hancock. So we're looking for at least like eight, eight folks to serve as a mentor. All right. 
So if, uh, if you're interested in mentoring, please you know, let me know. You email Jamie. Um, and uh, um, are we considering former board, board members? members? Yes. yes. Yeah, I, have, I, have, I have a couple of names that we can do for that. All right, um, so now we're on to the uh, Unified District Articles of Agreement and discussion on current Articles of Agreement in relation to Unified Elementary School. Did folks, and Chris, you had asked us to be on the agenda last month as well, just the Articles of Agreement in general, and there had been a talk for a while about what it would be, what, what the articles of agreement said specifically about a unified elementary. Do folks have an opportunity to read through these? Yep. Um, yeah, and <clears throat> you know, I, reading through the um, was kind of the the presentation part that was the proposal, I guess. Um, that provided the background and justification. And I, I do still agree with the um, discussion of the elementary school there, where it says that it's important for our youngest learners to be educated in elementary schools located in their home communities. And I think when we were doing the merger, we were very clear on that, that we wanted to have separate elementary schools so that the, you know, kids are, lo are educated in their local community. Um, and I still, I still agree with that. So I'm not very excited about combining elementary schools, or I don't see that there's a good reason to do so as of now. Um, but we had a request to have a discussion about it, so <coughs> I'm willing to hear what people want to say about that. I know on my end, uh, just kind of bringing up the articles of agreement was, you know, I mean, anytime you establish rules, yeah. it's good to go over them once in a while to see are they working, are they not working, what should we make amendments to. And, and correct me if I'm wrong, but it seems as though that the comments that I've heard, either in around the board or in around the community, <clears throat> seems to be um, three, three things. I don't want to say they're major things, but... Um, there's the the legal the legal um, vote counting piece of it at the clerk's office, which is right now the way in which we do it is we <clears throat> co-mingle the ballots, meaning that they're not counted in their respectful voting stations, or then transported to one location to be counted, um, well, co-mingled, um, which is. It's it's not a it's not a practice that that the Secretary of State's office likes to see. Um, the the other piece that as um, Andrew had just brought up is the you know and there was a few others that had brought up as well as you know taking a look at the elementary location but not just the elementary how how is elementary <coughs> middle school and high school working out how are those campuses working out um, and then the other piece that I, I believe. Um, Rodney had brought up at one point because we were starving for members and we had at least one board seat open all the time was is the size of the board something that is sustainable at six or should we be looking to 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 go down to four I think was would be the only other option but um, so those are kind of the three things I guess that I would like to talk about um, um, it, now the piece on the the vote counting I don't even know if that's something that we can even make a decision on. That might be something that that Jamie has to reach out to legal counsel to see if if that's you know can you count them in your own um, towns and then publish the numbers you know independently or, or something like that. Count them independently, combine them, and then publish. Them. Yeah, I mean it has a lot of challenges. It you know so for instance in well in Bethel anyways you know we had to. Um, trans two members had to transport those to the superintendent's office and then and then you only have two members there and maybe two members from Royalton I'm assuming to count all the ballots um, 
but you know, you have that whole thing if you're transporting from one destination to another, you know, yeah. something can happen to them or whatever. Um, so, um, I didn't see in the article of articles of agreement where it specifically says commingling. Was it down in the? Let's see. It just seems like there was a reason for doing that, and I don't know. I mean, I think I the, the original was. reason was that we didn't want it to be divided by towns. So that you'd see, like, well, you know, one town's forcing the, this onto another town. You know. Yeah. Like, I think the idea is we're one unified district, and if we're not kind of looking at what one town is doing and what another town is doing, then that kind of helps with the unity. Right. Yes. Yeah. So you know, if it's possible to just report num one number but have them counted separately, I have no problem with that. Um, yeah, and, and that was a request, you know, that Pam, the clerk, had sure. had talked about that it's a challenge um, to do it. Um, yeah, if, if we did do it separately, would the clerk need to be present at both counts? They certify both counts. Yeah. So they certify the both counts. Does that mean that they need to be there for both? Or would they just designate that kind of a point? They can designate. They can designate. Okay. They, they still know, sign a off on certifying. Right. It's probably a legal, you know, you probably have to talk to the legal counsel on if that's something that... Yeah, that can be done or not, but it just seems to be that keeps coming up when the uh, right. voting season for this. Yeah, yeah I mean, I, it was very easy this year to do those ballots. It didn't take long at all. <laughs> well, when there's no, <laughs> when it's all uncontested. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's they, easy. Yeah, yeah. but if you get like writing campaigns or whatever, yeah. then right, it just right. becomes a very cumbersome, yeah. cumbersome thing. But um, um, so the only thing I saw that was that elected at large on. Um, at art large basis by Australian ballot vote of the mm -hmm. voters. Um, like I didn't see anything that said that they had to be commingled, but maybe that's just because it's at large that means they have to be commingled. I can check with legal counsel and have and report back to the board on that inquiry. Okay. You'd be for the next meeting. I mean, I'll get the response and send it to you. A town clerk might have information on it too. I mean, uh, I think she's looking for some. No, they're gonna they're gonna want some. Actually, yeah, I think yeah. she's looking for some direction on that. Oh, maybe it was in the warning. I I, I, actually, I saw it somewhere. <coughs> I didn't actually read the warning. It definitely would have said it in the warning. It referred to a statute, I thought, but uh, yeah, at large. Oh, right here. Been Article Nine, date of voter action. Maybe. Right, but I thought that that was just for basically the and the vote. Oh, no, my list on it. I thought it referred to a statute somewhere. <coughs> it. Well, they they refer in Article Eleven. They ref, you know is where we break down the. The difference between the annual budget and you know what's done in person versus what what is done on Australian ballot, and it just says refers back to the yeah 17 VSA 26. 80. Well, so that's the process for changing from in person <coughs> meeting to Australian ballot. I oh, okay. So I don't think that that's the one that would say that it's commingled. Yeah, I I will inquire and then send that to you guys. Okay. about why that's being put on. I mean, our legal counsel puts together our warning, so I'll ask the why and reverse the commingling. <clears throat> yeah, if it's something we can just change in the next warning, that'd be great. Right. <laughs> well, right, because to change anything within the articles of agreement, we need to put this back out for a vote. Right. But I don't see anything in the article. No, me either. So that's why I'm going to inquire. I'm going to talk about the articles of agreement, talk about the commingling, say I'm not seeing it. But yet it's been what we've been provided on our warnings and ask the why to that. Yeah. Okay. Good. Um, okay. So other things on the articles of agreement. Um, like, do other board members think we should have a unified elementary school? Yeah. Oh, I, I would like to see that. Um, it just feels like 
to me, it just makes sense. We got. I know it's a little bit more travel for some, but it would be. I don't know. The kids come together in middle and high school, and they still is it's like two separate schools, and it's still. It just seems like it would make more. Uh, more of a community if we started them out together at a younger age, and the other thing is the bus and. Uh, you know, if you started, you could have an elementary school that started at one time. All the kids get there, I'd say, seven, I don't know, 750. And then the high school doesn't, middle school and high school starts at 830. So the same buses that did the elementary routes could go around and do all the middle and high school is second. You have two different start times, which a lot of people think high school should start later. I don't know, there's all kinds of things that could happen. Um, but I, I think you could still do that with the separate schools. I mean, like basically, you'd be doing two bus rounds either way. Yeah, you probably could. I mean, that's it's one of the things, I guess. But uh, I, I just think it would work better if it was they started out in elementary together, and went right up through. When I talk, maybe just hesitation. Go ahead. Go ahead, Faith. Oh, okay. okay. My my biggest hesitation is the idea of six year olds being on a school bus for probably forty five minutes to get to school. It just that does not sound like a, a very good proposition. When I taught in Barry City, when I first started out, I was in junior high. But they called it junior high, sixth, seventh, and eighth. And we were fed by five different elementary schools within the city. And you knew, you could tell from the kids what kids went to what school, what part of town. You had the, those that had, had the riches, you had those that didn't have the riches, and you could tell just from what school they came from. And it was, it took, I, I don't know if you ever really did get them together as a group, whereas if they had all been together, which they are now, um, I mean, they have their little, little little pods, their groups, their whatever, but they're all mingled together, and you didn't get that classist attitude that I got when I was teaching sixth grade from the kids, because you just did. And it wasn't from the kids. The kids got it from their parents, and that's just the way it was. And I... I think it makes a huge difference when they get together. Now here you've only got two schools, and they're not that far apart. They really aren't. I mean, transportation between here and Bethel is not that far. If I can go pick up my granddaughter several times from Bethel and I'm on the far south of Royalton, then I think they can handle a bus ride. As long as rules are set and kids know how to behave and converse <coughs> instead of being on, the, being on their cell phones all the time. But, or put them on their cell phones all the time while they're on the bus, and then they have to get rid of them when they get to school, one or the other. But uh. I mean, I guess, I guess what I'd like to see, anyways, is you know, again, I'm just one of those type of people. Like, let's just throw it against the wall and see what comes out of it. Does does it make sense? Let's could we could we collect data to see what are the pros and cons to make it up? Like, you know, classroom sizes, allotments of teachers. <coughs> um, and, and Consistency see, of the <laughs> curriculum, um, in-service days. I mean, just like um, how does it look? Transportation. I'm interested um, in everything Chris is saying right now. What does that make for classrooms? And then just look at it as a board level and say, here are the pluses, here are the minuses. Mm -hmm. What do we feel? Leave it alone. Do something different. Maybe a hybrid method. Who knows? I I do know just a little bit from looking at the middle school versus high school, you know, piece of it is. You know, I think there's more opportunity for our middle schoolers if they were in the same complex with our high schoolers. And, and the thing I say about that is, like, right now, and I, and I coach over a middle school, and I'm back and forth, and I have kids in both schools, is nothing against anybody in either one of the schools, but, the, you know, the, when it comes to the academics and the arts, I'm sorry, the arts and athletics piece of it, there's a little bit of a disconnect there of, you know, the high school has a little bit more resources than middle school does. And I don't want to say they get left behind, but it, 
they don't have as many of those opportunities that if they were in the same buildings with plays um, or just athletics, you know, an athletic director has to go from this school to that school, can't be in two schools at the same time, you know, it, it's difficult. So I think there's, there's opportunities there, I guess is what, what I'm saying. And I, I, I think what would be nice is to have the principals get together and maybe explore some of those ideas of what they're seeing at each campus and what they're seeing at each um, uh, school level and, and how and what those uh, maybe they could report back to the board on uh, what what those benefits and non-benefits would be or what they would see in their professional opinions my experience from being spending 30 years in a middle school high school um, situation is that it's really hard for the middle school to adopt best practices for example, the pods, the longer blocks, when you're tied to the high school schedule, because if you're going to have shared staff, you you have to you have to sacrifice some of those better middle middle school practices in order to accommodate the shared staff with the high school. If it's not going to be shared staff, then then I don't see a problem with it. If they're really going to be separate, um, that's yeah, that's just my experience. And from, I can certainly see it from like the arts and the play and stuff, having advantage of having them in the same place. But for athletics, like gym, sharing the gym, sharing the fields. Like, oh, sure, yeah. yeah. It's very nice having that separate complex in Bethel that's all the middle school and they you know, get to use it whenever they, yeah. you know, having to have all the teams in, on the same campus, I think would be a challenge. Um, but uh, I don't know, what do you, is... Well, and you'd still have new influx of kids because we've got other schools coming here in the end by, by the time they finish their tenure. So it's not like you're going to get all the kids together and keep them together the whole time. You're going to get two of the towns together and then they're still going to pick up other kids from Tunbridge and so on. So it's not like, it's not like you've got the whole... The whole slot. It's not like you can get the whole slate of kids. There's still going to be, oh, you're from this school, I'm from that school, a little bit. So um, it's not like you, you know, you could mark it down as a clear victory if if you combine them like that. So, um, would the administration have any comment on the discussion? I'm wondering, do you see that kind of town clicks happening in the middle school or high school? Do we have? I mean, I'll, I would say that the administration, I think, would be <clears throat> very open and excited to be able to provide proposals to speak to the pros and cons and really research it. Um, the, and this is something that my example is when we just brought two communities together in First Branch, that was a year undertaking. That didn't just happen in a month, right? And so there was a study committee that was put together that would, we actually brought an outside consultant in to help organize that work so that folks could see that it was impartial. I thought that was an important step that we took around that. And they helped lead the committee through a research project around it. And then the committee did a presentation to the board, got feedback from the board. Eventually the committee made a proposal to the board and the board decided whether or not they wanted to pursue that proposal or not. So, I mean, the board could decide to ask the administration to provide some pros and cons to start with, and then off of that presentation, decide whether or not they want to form a formal committee to study it, or you could decide to form a committee, or you could say you don't want to con continue to pursue this conversation at all. But. I would say, I think when I speak, I'm speaking on behalf of the principals that it is something that I think the administration would like to dive into and roll up our sleeves because we haven't really spent time investigating the question at a real quantitative level. But that right. would take some time. I can't tell you we're just going to turn that, we wouldn't just turn that around. I mean, that. Right. Mm -hmm. It took years in Barry City, it just took years. And the ones that had the hardest time with it were not the kids. 
It was the teachers and it was the parents that had the hardest time moving to a central location with kids from all around. I had, there were teachers that decided they were going to retire rather than do that, rather than give up their little school. So it's, it, it's hard in every aspect. But the kids did fine. Yeah. I, I will say, I do feel like when we were doing the merger process, it was very clear there were going to be separate elementary schools, and that was something yeah. that yeah, people, were, people were fairly adamant about. Mm -hmm. Like, there were very strong opinions about there being elementary schools in both towns. Oh. And so I, <coughs> I am not particularly excited about bringing the subject forward. <laughs> Um, open Pandora's box here? Well, partially that, but also, you know, it kind of feels a little bit like, you know, we, the merger got passed, and now we're like, oh, no, just kidding, we're going to merge the elementary schools too, where that was kind of a step too far at the time anyway. Yeah. Um, so I'm not against the administration getting some more information, but I am definitely not enthusiastic about <coughs> this idea. <laughs> um, I do think the commingling of ballots, I think we should separate that out because that's definitely something that we should look at. So can we have that kind of be a separate Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think I sort of feel like we discussion decided at this point. That I would. Yeah. And are we good with, I mean, do we feel confident that we'll keep six chairs? And I mean, because that was the other question that had come up. And Right. Well, I, mean, I, well, I, I would like to now, think that we, we have, could be fine, but. I, I think it's actually good having six because then if you do have a vacancy or you do have somebody who can't make it or is you know late or whatever then we have two two people who are you know backups right whereas if we go down to four one person misses and you don't have a one. and i know it'd be tricky to have four and be on all these different committees and right. issue boards but it's just you know we were talking about yeah well I whatever mean, six months ago sitting nice here saying we we had two open seats the only reason i suggested it is because we went three years with like two three members empty seats yeah, yeah. so that's why i suggested it i mean we've got a full board now so uh, one one thing that did come up um reading through the Articles of Agreement is we did included in the Articles of Agreement was this uh, school councils, mm -hmm. and we never really did those never got created. Um, so I wonder if having a school council where there are parents who are involved in you know providing feedback to either the board or the administration or whatever. I'm not exactly sure what those were going to be. Um, and the way I read it was, would that be a student council at each campus? Is that kind of the way it was? I, I don't think it's a student council. I think it's a oh, parent parent community parent. council okay. to kind of, I don't know. Did, didn't we try to and it never really took off? Yeah. We had coffee with a principal and I don't know, we've had some other different things that were hmm? have trouble filling the board seats yeah so right we, i guess we are a council of parents uh, for like, yeah because it just doesn't uh it just wasn't any interest in it from the means i did go to right well i mean one of the benefits of whatever the school council would be would be having if there are tuitioned parents from other communities who would be interested in joining it mm -hmm. um that would be one benefit because we can't, you know, people can attend board meetings, but um, like we don't have any. Do we do we open it up uh, publicly and try to see if we can get interested individuals that want to come together and revamp it, or you know, and if we don't get anybody, then just, we just give it the college it, try. Leave it where it's at, or yeah. we, we could invite parents to the school board meetings. <laughs> Yeah, that works. Here we go. Well, we got them. Like, <laughs> I mean, it's almost like you're looking for PTAs in each group. Yeah, we have that. Yeah, yeah I mean, that's, we do have PTAs. Basically, that's basically what this says. But we don't have it at the middle and high school level. level. In Bethel's elementary school. Well, the other, the other thing I was reading into it kind of almost seemed like it was giving, I don't want to say they don't have a voice, but, you know, individuals that, well, let's say they live in, 
Stockbridge that have a son or daughter that goes to one of the schools and it gives them a little more yeah. voice into what's going on with you know at the board level or the school level rather than you know they don't get to vote on town meeting day you know those types of things but it, it's certainly in line to our work within the community schools grant so I would be happy to um, work with our community school coordinator Mary Shell to put a proposal together what that might look like with the principals okay. and share it with the board next month yeah because it certainly gets to the heart of what we're trying to create also within our community school work mm -hmm. yeah I mean I think like us as a board we kind of provide the overall overall you know policy and direction mm -hmm. and stuff but having kind of a group that would provide feedback on how things are going from the parent perspective or mm -hmm. from the family perspective might be good for yeah the middle they do have the PTAs for the elementaries but the middle and the high school you know I mean it's exactly why I've started these community conversations they're supposed right. to be two-way conversations <clears throat> to give us feedback on what's working what's not working right you know it's not uh, those are not designed to be we're going to talk at you Mm -hmm. They're really trying to be designed to like give us feedback about what's working, what's not working, mm -hmm. and let's have a conversation about it. Okay. Um, so I think, you know, in the sense of that, it seems like we could certainly try to create some that are more specific just to your district that are happening on a regular basis, and it certainly aligns to some of the goals of the plan. I, I, I don't know the etiquette, and I've been at this a while. If public should comment on the comment or not. <laughs> You can comment. Go ahead. Okay. Um, so, right at the merger time, this, the, I can't even get the word right, the school console concept had best intentions of growing legs and walking forward. Um, limited parental involvement, it kind of fizzled. And I'm not using the right political terms, but um, it kind of fizzled. And so in trying to reinvigorate it, we have these committees that are called finance, facilities, uh, recruitment, <coughs> communication, um, the child care, or whatnot, and parental involvement on some of them, but not all of them, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so that was kind of an evolution over time. Um, and we kind of got to get to, you may need to go, I apologize, I'm rewording my statement. Um, you may need to put your feet in one camp or the other, but not both, because Parents are limited in time, and I could do an assessment to say, hey, who wants to be on the negotiations committee? <laughs> right. um, and you could get the answer. Um, I'm not trying to shoot ourselves in the foot and count our eggs before they're hatched, but we've tried it, and then I shouldn't say we, but it was tried. And in it being tried, we evolved and modified to succeed in a better format. Um, and then the community discussions aren't going, you belong to Royalton, you belong to Bethel, and that's where you stay. The community discussions is another evolution of such because it takes what was a school council, uh, school council from the committee work to more global, and so it pivots between both of those. Maybe, you know, the White River Valley Unified District has a facility focus, but the folks in Sharon have their own facility to worry about. And so this pivots between both of them and supports the coexistence of both. And then it will potentially evolve, in my mind, it will evolve to grow up to be something ready for high school. Um, but I, I don't know that future state, but from a bystander or public comment, that's the growth that I have seen. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I do think the the kind of uh, committees that we have, the facilities committee and recruitment, those are kind of board work but specialized, so they're not necessarily kind of the same thing as the councils, which were going to be separate from the board that were, again, I need to read through it. They do have public involvement, though. Right, they do have public involvement, but generally it's, you know, yeah. Um, I mean, it's folks interested in that subject. Right. But. But how do people find out about them aside from somebody taking notes? <laughs> yeah, that's um, the thing is we, we aren't, and I don't know that we ever really fully tried the councils. Like Reed started something one year and I think it met a couple times and then didn't really go anywhere. I 
would be interested in, in hearing if Jeff had interest in, you know, he, I think he has the personality to kind of pull something like this off and bring the community together and, and make something worthwhile out of it. Um, so if, if you want to work with Mary. You know, I work with the principals. I work with Mary. I mean, it, it literally is at the heart of what we're trying to do with community schools, trying to get community into our buildings to have conversations. And I think if, you know, if we did have something like that that was a little more official than the community conversations, like the more, more people we get involved, then they can kind of be a staging ground for, you know, you've been doing this, why don't you join the board? And then maybe. Yeah, it's just, it's just challenging, right? The SU has, a, has an equity task force, and we've got across the whole SU 12 people engaged, and yeah. we've put call outs. So I just, I think we gotta be realistic too, oh, like sure. Jamie's saying about, sure. We can try and try, and there, I do think I do think we create lots of mediums for folks to engage. But there is the real the reality of just bandwidth folks have. Yeah. and you know we've got good music boosters, we've got yeah. great athletic boosters, and you know people. It's only so many so many engaged things that people can do, but we can give it another try, I guess. Right. Um, any further discussion on that topic? It's still not clear to me about the board in regards to like what you are charging. Are you charging the administration to create a proposal to have within a couple months about pros and cons for the board to then consider whether or not they wanted to pursue that conversation further? I just need some clearer direction. We don't need um, a motion, do we? One, uh, no, I don't think so. One thing I would ask of you is do you guys feel like you have the bandwidth right now to spend a lot of time looking at this? Like, it sounded like you guys would be more than just kind of like a meeting where you're like, eh, is this a good idea or not a good idea? You wanted to kind of get into it. Yeah, no, I think we, I would believe if we were going to provide data to the board, we would really need to get into what it would look like in, in regards to just like staffing models, right, student cl class sizes, any efficiencies and or reinvestment in expanding further programming due to efficiency mm -hmm. seen, um, and really run all that data and pull it together in a, into a comprehensive report for yeah, folks. Even down like the bus routes and travel times. Um, yes. So, yeah, I mean, I guess I'm asking, is this a good time? You know, like certainly, through COVID and you know you guys have had a lot of very busy times and I don't want to have you know there's no rush on this so if this would take away from you know work that is more pressing then I might say well schools more. wind up they don't wind down and I always say that right, right. so principals jobs wind up from here on out and, and the reasoning why for that is they're in the thick of hiring season. And we're trying to close the school year while we also are planning for summer and opening for next. Right. And so I don't want to speak on behalf of them, but I have always felt, especially where they sit, that my busiest months were now until June. Um, for me and where I sit, we just put four budgets to bed. We got two to go. After they're put to bed in May, my bandwidth to, for projects like this do open up. So I don't know how principals are feeling in regards to being able to tackle this and have a thorough presentation by June. I certainly could meet with them and pull something together on their behalf based on feedback that they're giving me. And I think we could have that ready for board review in June and yeah. digestion. So Not before that, just because I do have, Tara and I have two districts that we need to we're like everything we just did for four. We're doing for two right now. <coughs> Budgets approved also, in May, and but we after do May, it in July or August, if, if that would be better. Yeah, I mean, why don't we shoot for June? And if I'm feeling like we haven't made good progress next month, I can update the board, and maybe then it's August. But for now, try to shoot for June. Okay. Yeah, and there's certainly no. It's not a rush, but it's just a slight. Yeah, I know. We want to keep keep. Not just drop the ball. But. We just always want to be looking at making making sure that we're always doing the best thing for the students and where does it come from, in different ideas. Okay. Is that the, yeah? Yeah, Fair it enough. works. Okay. All right. Um, moving on to the declaration of inclusion, possible action. So on the last page of the packet. Mm -hmm. The declaration of inclusion. Yeah, so at the, um, 
At the annual school meeting that we had, um, at the end there was there was some citizens that had spoke in regards to um, kind of where our board stance was in regards to some of um, LGBTQ um, pieces um, that had come before the school over over a period of time. Um, the um, you know we had the the resolution LGBTQ resolution that that came before the board this winter um, that didn't move forward. Um, it, it seemed like uh, from the discussions of that evening that um, you know myself and others wanted to see more inclusiveness of, of a resolution um, um, to move something forward. So so I, I started speaking out with some. Uh, uh, working with some community members, um, the um, the town of Bethel had um, the Equity and Inclusion Committee in Bethel had met. Um, well, they've been meeting for a couple years now and had put forward a declaration of inclusion um, last September, um, and and it was adopted by the town of Bethel uh, in September. So, um, so what I was looking at was you know, um, a strong statement that shows both that the school and the board, you know, takes the inclusion of all of our students very seriously. Um, so I, I looked at, uh, if you had the town of Bethel one, that's, I think maybe Jamie got it at some point, but it's very similar to this one, just, um, just kind of um, incorporates the school feel of it um, rather than the town. I think it's important that, especially with some of the community members that did voice their opinions at the um, any other business portions of the meeting that, you know, I think with, with some of the things that have, uh, we have talked about over here over the last six months that it's important that not just the board but the school, um, you know, have a strong statement of where we stand. So um, I feel that that this declaration of inclusion is exactly what it says it is. It's inclusive of everybody, um, everybody that's in, in our school walls, so. Okay. Um, is that everybody had a chance to read through the declaration of inclusion that Chris is proposing? Yeah, I, I had actually printed the one from the town. Uh, I was going to, I was going to bring it up tonight, anyways. So uh, it's pretty much the same thing. Uh, but yeah, I, I would make a motion that we accept uh, this declaration of inclusion. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay. Uh, do we have some discussion on this. Uh, <clears throat> question partly for Jamie. There's already an, an overarching policy uh, for Vermont schools and, and an SU policy, correct? Well, that addresses specific to transgender and nonconforming students. I see that this addresses everyone. Yeah. But there's an over, <laughs> overarching policy. The SU has a policy that's based on state guidance. Okay. So, but the SU has a policy that we are beholden by already yes. mm -hmm. for and, this. And we have the anti-racism policy. Which and we have an anti-racism already. Yeah. I mean, I, I do think that this is a worthwhile thing to adopt. I mean, it's... I, I well, there's nothing, in, there's nothing in here that's negative. No. No, no. Um, but I was, like, I was just wondering, there's other... There's other policies and statements that we are beholden to. Right. Under, I mean, the under policies. The policies are more like these are the things that we're going to follow. Mm -hmm. This is just the kind of a, a statement. This is our belief. Or a whatever. statement. Yeah. Um, you know, I do just would say, you know, this is. I, I agree with all of it, and we do welcome everybody. I do think when you do have a situation where there's a specific cohort or subset that you know has differing needs it, it you we can also like this shouldn't preclude us from expressions of support of other groups um, 
and I don't see that that is necessarily divisive or anything like that. Um, but I do support this as well. Um, I had meant to print out the Bethel one as well, um, just to see what the changes were between the Bethel one and the. Is there any significant? Not nope. right. um, probably not much. It's just a little more student specific as opposed to uh, residents. Right. Yeah, the one thing was that the, it has the town of Bethel condemns racism and welcomes all persons. So this just has the condemns racism um, isn't in there. So is there, would we want to include that or keep it the way that it is here? I guess is one thing I'd be curious to hear others' opinions on. I think this is much more positive than rather than condemning, we are welcoming. <laughs> okay. It's just just a general feeling. I mean, it does later I'd say, as a school district, we formally condemn all di all discrimination in all its forms. So, yeah, yeah I don't feel self conscious about that as a statement. We can formally condemn discrimination right. yep. in all its forms. Yeah. Um, given that given that this doesn't preclude, preclude us from making further statements and that we're already subject to uh, other things, there's nothing in here that I can't support. Okay. Are we ready to... A Andrew, I have one call. question. Sure. Just, I'm, I'm just curious. Cause, and Chris, you probably might be able to answer it because of it coming... It, men it mentions lots of, of... gives lots of examples of parties, right? And it mentions gender identity or expression. It, it does speak to sex, but it doesn't speak to sexual orientation. And I don't know if that was just an oversight in the Bethel one. I just it seems to name every single mm. thing, but it doesn't sp speak to that. And I know I'm going to get asked that question. Well, it yeah. does say sex okay. and gender identity or well, it says expression, sex. right? But gender identity or expression. Well, it so doesn't say to sexual orientation. So should we modify it to I just, sex, I'm, sexual I just think that that gender. could have been asked. So could we amend it to put sexual orientation in that list of uh, things that are um, welcome uh, and supported? Yeah, I think we I mean, it wasn't, wasn't in the initial declaration of inclusion that was done by a, um, a pretty thorough uh, board of individuals that that represent all, you know, equity and inclusion. Um, I, I actually didn't even think about that, but um, I'm not sure why why they didn't put it in there. Or maybe it was an oversight, or maybe there was a reason for it. Um, I don't. I mean, I guess. I mean, sometimes I. I mean, looking at it now, I, I don't know if it needs to be in there. Um, we're talking about. Um, you know, we're, we're in school, being educated. I don't know if I think it's pretty much covered in the rest of the document. But. I just think it'd be a shame to do eight or nine things that we're saying we're, we're doing a declaration of include and then just leaving one on the board would just be uh, why leave one on the board when we could have everything listed by getting one more in there. Well, I, yeah, I just not sure if it's already covered there, but if you want to add it. I'm okay with adding it in. So uh, I guess we'd need a motion to amend the Declaration of Inclusion. A motion to amend to include sexual orientation. Or would it be sex, uh, Maybe sex. After, after, after sex, we could put sexual orientation, then gender identity or expression. So it's been moved and seconded. Um, so we're just voting on that amendment to this declaration at the moment. Um, is there any discussion, further discussion on the amendment? Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. I apologize. Who motioned that and second? Ed motioned Nancy second. Okay. okay. All right. So now on... Adopting the Declaration of Inclusion, is there any further discussion on the Declaration as a whole? Okay. Um, 
All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Any opposed? The declaration of inclusion is adopted. Um, one thing we didn't discuss is we've adopted this declaration. Do we want anything to be done with the declaration, like have it I, mo somewhere? I motion have it posted at the, the our, I'm sorry, the, the posting places, designated posting places. Okay. <clears throat> I mean, I was kind of thinking, you know, when I was looking on the website, it would be nice to have yeah. Well, I like that. Somewhere front and center of the website. Yeah. Um, or maybe any other important documents that the school has. Student that, handbook. Student handbook. Student handbook. Yeah. yeah. Take so, things, um, or I don't know if there's any, in, you know, certain literature that goes to another school when we're trying to recruit or something, but maybe it should be tagged along yeah. there. But yeah. So, yeah, I think the posting places are more for ephemeral things, you know, like the monthly <clears throat> notices and things like that. Well, I, 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 no, I was thinking temporarily right. so that they know that we've done this. Uh, I was I was thinking more, maybe I should have been more specific with my motion, maybe uh, posted the designated spot, spaces for 30 days so that people could see that we just did this and make it a very uh, public statement by letting people know in general that we've made this declaration of conclusion. That, that was just my thought. Um, you know, I'm not married to it. I just was thinking that, you know, if everybody saw it, they would understand that we we had just done this. <clears throat> but I, I, I do like the web and in handbooks very much, so. Okay. Um. I, I, I'd be happy to, to, to place a motion that it would be included on the website in any literature and handbooks as appropriate, and if if the, you don't feel the posting place, I can leave off the posting places if you don't feel it's appropriate. Well, the minutes are posted, right? Right. It'll so it's in the minutes. minutes. Okay. Well, then then I motion that it be included on the website in some capacity, prominently, and that it be included in any materials that are distributed as appropriate to students and parents. Okay. I'll second that. Okay. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Thank you. So that as finishes the discussion items. Uh, we've already adopted the VSBA Code of Ethics and the Declaration of Inclusion. So we're on to the final public comments. Is there any? I do, but um, I think we skipped over Tara. She's here. Oh, right, right. Yes, you're right. She's got kids. I <laughs> Tara, we had tabled your part of the uh, meeting, but you were here. Good evening, everyone. My report was very short this meeting, just letting you know what's happening in the business office during the month of March. So if there's any questions on that, I'll happily answer it. Does anybody have any questions for Tara? Okay. Well, sorry for not having you do that a while ago when you first came. <laughs> That's all right. No worries. All right, thanks, Tara. All right, now would you like to do public comment? Um, yeah, there is apparently um, some gaps in our baseball program for, um, I guess it's specifically 13-year-old students. Um, they basically age 13-year-old sixth grade students. Mm. Um, they are aged out of all um, Cal Ripken programs. And they're not eligible for our middle school program because VPA says okay. they're seventh and eighth grade. Um, so there's there's three or four this year. I'm sure it happens more. Um, it just seems like a weird miss um, that they just they basically don't have anywhere to go unless they travel. So are we wherever. limited to seventh and eighth grade? I'm going to try to deal with that. I didn't realize um, that we this brought it up to the the middle school baseball coach. Brought it up to the um, AD and he was kind of like VPA says seventh and eighth we really can't. I mean we we certainly had it sixth seems, graders like on easy, middle school teams in the past. Um, I'll I, inquire about this. Okay. I, I did. <laughs> I already did today. Uh, I talked to Mr. Perot. 
Uh, he said the decision was given to him by the school board when he came on. Well, originally we said that we were going to do five six with rec, but this is separate. Okay. So, well, uh, these kids these kids are six. I'm going to deal with it. Yeah. Okay. I mean, the, the the breakdown is yeah. that one thing ends with age and the other begins with grade. Yeah, I'll do right. it. Okay. We'll get Thanks. it fixed. Thanks. Thanks for bringing it to our attention. Okay. And actually, it's something that comes up more times than not, and it's one of the things that hopefully that the um, the, the SU and the principals will include in when we talk about how the alignment of the schools and the campuses are going because what has been really challenging having had two daughters that went through the sixth grade uh, and of being a coach in middle school is the sixth graders have they're in a tough spot they're they're either they're either brought up into the middle school maybe at too early of an age or they're kind of left behind to deal with an erect department uh, type of you know athletic thing um, still think that in some ways that the sixth graders are most of them are not mature enough to be in the middle school um, they need another year of you know to get there to deal with those kind of more real world issues that they deal with in the middle school that's kind of the melting pot of you know our school district so I think you know, and we've seen that with the athletics it's been challenging because we'll have one year we'll have like like basketball one year we had 18 sixth graders come out for basketball and we had 18 sixth graders and then we had like 18 seventh and eighth graders you know so yeah. we it was like what do we do with all these kids yeah I think and then the fifth grade rec team had three you know so it was like I think it's been a good decision to have fifth and sixth play rec right. in general and have seven eight but an example like this where f students have aged out yeah. we need to invite them to our seven eight team so, yeah. but, they're, they're 13 they aged out of the program they're eligible yeah for so we'll, we'll but, but I would make the argument that if these children are in our school system they should have 100% of the privileges of being in that school system. And one of those is to play middle school ball. Like, if you are a talented sixth grader, there should be no reason why you're not on the middle school team and why you have to be maybe playing down at a lesser level, you know, or vice versa. I mean, if you need a little more skills, then there's the opportunity to go to the rec piece. But I don't think that we should be, you know, I'm opening up a can of worms here, but I don't know that we should be just necessarily telling these sixth graders okay, you can be on the bowling team, but you can't be on the soccer team, you know, or we're kind of doing this on a case-by-case -case basis. It's either they should have all the privileges that come with being a middle schooler, which is being on a middle school team with a choice. Maybe their choice is you could be on a middle school team, or if you feel that you need a stronger skill set, maybe you could play direct league. Um, but right now we're kind of doing this on a case-by-case -case basis saying... I think you kind of have to, though. Because, I mean, like, but soccer... Fair. But it's soccer... You might need those extra kids in order to get sixth graders, but basketball you clearly can't. So, like, you kind of have to make judgment calls. About I know, but it's it's not fair, right? I mean, we're telling I mean, it's, it's fair if you do it consistently. Like, if but we're not consistently. We're, but I think we are. We but just we are. said we were opening up if kids aged out. Right. I mean, we are consistent. We're, we're letting these them kids play. can't play rec, so they play middle school. These kids can play rec, so they play rec. Right. That's consistent. I don't know. I, I don't know. I mean, I mean I, it's okay. We can agree not to agree, but yeah. it's. I just feel like if we're going to tell these kids they're in the middle school, then they should have all the privileges of middle school. You know, if they're not mature enough to be in middle school and be on a middle school team, then maybe they should be in elementary school. But recognizing the public comment period, um, I don't know if our rural nature supports a 36-member sporting team. If in your scenario, I'm borrowing that scenario of 18 kids in sixth grade and 18 kids in seventh sure. and eighth. And so given our community structures, and this is not limited to Bethel or South Royalton, but, well, gosh, we've got a sixth grade girls team. Who can we play against? Well, they're going to get played against those seventh and eighth graders from that other town. Right. And so what we find ourselves doing is trying to find our footing on how do we package this middle school when these sixth graders are playing an eighth grader? And this also happens in Cal Ripken. So um, the flexibility, I think, is done to the best degree of being unbiased. Um, and that flexibility that's been granted allows to cater to the unique situation that varies from one year to the next. There's not consistency, oh, I can predict Tommy Sue 
Tommy and Sue are going to come up every year and I'm going to have to decide which team they're playing on. Um, but our surrounding communities have different structures that we REC is challenged by and they made a decision, REC made a decision within the past two years directionally which helped us find our footing forward. Um, and I think we're on a good path. I wasn't aware of the, the aging concept and I follow baseball so this is fascinating to me. But um, I don't think our communities that surround us can come up with a competing sixth grade basketball team and I'm just sticking at basketball because we just got out of it. Um, and so we kind of have to fit what surrounds us to move forward in a competitive fashion, but that won't solely drive us. We're attentive both ways, um, looking at us and then looking at the community that surrounds us. No, I 100% agree with that. And I think, again, to back up into you know, the article's origination is we put ourselves in a really tough spot with the sixth graders being in the middle school. I mean, again, we, you know, we made perfect sense of Nobody else in our area, you know, in our area has sixth graders in middle school. So why do we have sixth graders in middle school? You know, and think of some of the challenges that we do have with that, of, you know, not being mature enough at, you know, at times. I've had two kids come through there, so I clearly know what we're up against, and I've coached sports with 18 kids on a basketball team, you know. Um, but we are not consistent with it, so I won't agree that we're, we are because we're not. And I will say that right now it's alienating some of the parents that have sons or daughters that are sixth graders that, let's say, wanted to play basketball middle school, that was told they have to go play rec ball. Now, do we want to go to high school here or not? Do we want to go to Randolph? You know, because Randolph, except, you know, like there's conversations happening. And if we want to, you know, I think the ultimate goal, like we've talked about, is to keep our enrollment and keep our students moving through the system. And, I would hope that it's the, a challenge that we have. I would remind the board, though, if folks are having these concerns, like Todd just did, if that's happening, Chris, I hope you're directing them back to administration because I'm not hearing from those sixth grade families. Yeah. So I hope you're asking them to share those concerns. Send one your way tonight. How's that? <laughs> well, please do. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I hear it all the time as a coach. I mean, well, I'm, please send them my direction because we yes. don't. But. I haven't heard that. Yeah. And when we hear about it, we fix it. Mm -hmm. I was just engaged. About it so today. I want to remind the entire board that those should be directed back to administration. Right. Thank you. It is. It's it's small school problems because like last year we had uh, my daughter plays softball and last year we had eight players. I mean they just barely had enough for a team. They had to scrounge to get enough to make a team, and this year they have twenty four. I mean it's just that's the way it goes. It's. It flex, there's a lot of flex. And it, and it is small school problem. But you know, yeah, it, we, it's, it's our problem, not the kids. A kid that right. wants to play shouldn't have no place to play yeah. if we're fielding a team. If we're well, fielding a team and a kid wants to play. Yeah, and I think we, we base it based on what makes sense for yeah. the kids developmentally and, you know, like where they're going to succeed the best, you know, I think. We definitely had a lot of challenge with the sixth graders being on the middle school teams, just all the sixth graders being on the middle school teams. That was not good for, not in the best interest of the sixth graders. We definitely were hearing a lot of concerns with that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so, you know, I think it's been, like, we've definitely changed the way that that was working, and I think it's been working better this year. Um, so, but it's an ongoing conversation, and, you know, we'll keep is, is adjusting. Base, baseball's the only sport like that. Right. With the yes. Age, ages yeah, yeah, out, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not grades kids out. Yeah, that's. I mean, they're yeah. talking about a pretty. I'm. I'm specifically talking about a very small. No, right. We we need to be responsive to address that. Is there any other public comment? Um, Are you saying something, Nancy? Yeah. She's moving her lips. She's yeah, we we can't hear you. Time. You're muted, Nancy, if you're talking to us. I think she, <laughs> she, I think she was saying goodbye. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. She hit the red button by mistake. All right. Uh, any new hires, resignations? We have a retirement. Not a resignation, but a retirement. Uh, Deb Olson Coffee, who has been there longer than Andra, which is a marker. <laughs> and Andrew's been with us 23 years, so Deb is not going to return in the fall. And I think we want to recognize her here this evening, but also as we wind down in June. 
and thank her for her years of service in the role as a paraeducator. Okay. Would you like us to make a motion thanking? Yeah, that'd be okay. great. I can, yeah, I can make a motion to formally thank her. Okay. Yep. Most, uh, the full name again? Full name, please. Deb Olson Coffee. I'm, I, I motion to recognize Deb Olson Coffee formally uh, for her meritorious service to our school system. Second. <coughs> All right. All in favor? Say aye. 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 And we're hoping to have a slate of new hires, for, even for some of the positions we hadn't filled this year, like foreign language, possibly for next month. Um, so we are getting folks applying to positions, and uh, principals are moving quickly. So we had none tonight, but I suspect some new hires for next month. Great. I don't think we have any other. Um, oh, yeah. Back. So we still don't have anybody for the negotiation council. Um, uh, I mean, I... I'll accept the nomination if somebody wants to nominate me. Okay. Entertain a motion to appoint Ed to the no uh, negotiations council. I'll move it. I'll second. Okay. Uh, all in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Thank you very much for yeah. volunteering. We can't, we, we, we can't have unresolved business if I can help it. So. Yeah, thanks, Ed. <laughs> Thursday night at 5.30 virtually Thursday. and in person at the central office. I'm more inclined to probably do those virtually. That's fine. No, okay. that's, that's fine. I'll get you the agenda. Okay. Oh, thank you very much, Ed. I'll help you. Appreciate that. I'll have this shirt on and pajama pants from below. <laughs> Um, future agenda items, uh, hearing about the update on the performance arts space next month. Yep. Um, uh, school councils, potential discussion yep. or proposal or something. Um, and then sometime in June or July or August, uh, when you're able, a presentation, uh, presentation on school structure. I want to get it on under future agenda so we don't lose it. Yeah. What was the second item? Uh, the school council's oh, yes. okay. proposals or something. Our next meeting date would be Tuesday, April 18th, 2023 at 7 p.m., not 6.30, at Bethel. Thank you, thank you, thank you. What's the date on that again? Uh, April 18th. Oh. And I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. Second. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thank